guys. Welcome to Monterey Car Week and welcome to the Rolls Royce Villa. And the reason why I'm here today is because of this car. But before we talk about that, because it's a very special car, I have here with me Alex Ines, head of design, coach build Rolls Royce. Of course, you are also in charge of the boat tail cars. But what do we have here today? And also, welcome. Oh, pleasure. It's really nice to be here with you um, and share with you the other latest work from the design studio um, and our latest expression in the modern movement of contemporary coach building that is of course La Rose Noir so drop tail. Rose Noir drop tail. So coach build, fully coach build. Indeed. Just like the boat tail. So tell me about the project, walk me through the design process maybe a little bit and maybe we look at some with the fine details because there's so many on the car. So I think the significance of creating the only roadster body style in the modern era of the brand was not lost on us um, and in many ways as a design team we felt liberated to fundamentally re-examine the tenets of Rolls-Royce design and that's perhaps no more evident than here with the interpretation of our iconic Pantheon grille where for the first time in the Mark's history the normally upright veins here are actually inclined and kinked rearwards at the top here and this together with the deeply set headlamps create this strong heavy brow impression which exaggerates a sort of proportion of width that, that we're not typically familiar with seeing on Rolls Royces. Usually we want to exaggerate height and formality. Um, what you can also notice is here where we would usually have a rectangular conclusion in the corner we actually have a chamfer and this chamfer together with the deep draw provides a functional aesthetic that is very suited to the roads to body type in knowing that the owner themselves is likely to be piloting this. Um, and to its flanks you can see how we've been guided by the art of reduction you know the paired back and reduced surfaces um, and what remains is executed with a level of clarity and, and precision um, that is only possible through a hand-built uh, coach-built Rolls-Royce motor car. The lower area is of course serving a functional purpose by way of drawing air into the car but we haven't left it untouched in terms of a canvas for decoration and you see this large additively produced piece that incorporates 202 individually uh, placed uh, ingots that are then painted yeah that are then painted in the same uh, body color yeah feel free feel free feel free that sounds, no no that sounds like a good bet if you're on the lower part maybe you can explain to me the integration of carbon fiber it's not something that you often see on the Rolls Royce on the outside. No, indeed. And I think it's important to emphasize that it's here for functional reasons. Um, okay. This is a two-seater uh, driver's car. So, of course, you know, performance and weight uh, plays an aspect, something you wouldn't normally um, expect us to take into consideration with a Rolls-Royce. Um, but the client, the commissioning client of La Rose Noir drop tail was quite insistent that they wanted to celebrate the textural sort of nature of the lower carbon fiber work to the car. Um, it does have over the top of it a tinted clear coat. Okay. Uh, that when it is out of uh, intensive sunlight actually almost looks opaque but when as today you have intensive light on it you can actually see the weave coming through the the clear coat which adds a level of fascination to it which i think is quite interesting sure and i know in your presentation you've talked about the lack of a rolls royce uh, logo badge on the side yeah What's the story there? Well, I mean, again, there's a lot to tell. First and foremost, maybe before touching on that, it's sure. important to emphasize this sort of sculpture here because for me, this is probably the most artful aspect um, of La Rose Noir drop tail. What you can also appreciate here in side view is the car has an incredibly unique stance, at least for a modern Rolls Royce. Typically, we want to have this sort of rake to rear and exaggerate that sense of sort of regal formality. Whereas here, there's a kind of prime quality. The car looks like it's sort of pushing forward and is poised on its axis. Axles, and we achieve that by way of the sculpture and the bodywork here. It's the meeting of a more conventional body side section here, although we work to lower the highlight and push the car onto its axles. And as that volume comes forwards, it meets with a line that develops off the outboard edge of the front axle, but then accelerates and sweeps back in before tucking back out. And that level of movement, that sort of expression to the surfaces is not something we're used to seeing on a, on a Rolls Royce at least. Um, and to your point, finally, the client was quite insistent that these forms should be uninterrupted and sort of remain pure in their, their, their distillation and representation. So typically we would find a, a Rolls-Royce uh, indicator together with the Rolls-Royce badge in this area here. And step one was actually to integrate the indicator into the forward area of the door handle. But secondly, and perhaps more profoundly, was to take our conventional Rolls-Royce badge, deconstruct it visually, and then represent it here with this beautiful interlocking profile that's placed as an ingot element across the uh, sorry atop the sail cow element which visually denotes the car as a two-seater inside view 
Understood it. All right, so uh, if we move around, what are we going to see in the back? Uh, here, I think we you know, really touch on the unique personality. I mean, the first thing is, of course, the, the sort of strong feeling of expression and sculpture to the overall volumes. Um, the Vantage is dominated by this transom surface, which is mimicking the construct of a yacht hull. So as a yacht hull would taper towards center line, it's then truncated. And it's exactly the tre same treatment here, albeit applied in an automotive context, that helps to establish the width of the car in rear view. Uh, it also gives us an uninterrupted canvas for the placement of the tail lamps and um, that are highly contemporary here in their execution but actually serve as a historical nod to early 1920s roadsters that also had these um, vertical uh, tail lamp arrangements. Gotcha. And what about the interior design? Gosh, there's a lot to point out on the interior but one thing as you touched on here is to really emphasize yes, this, 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 this rear deck Very area because there is a particular, I think, point of fascination for us related to the drop tail name, that we wanted to achieve a dramatically low dropping rear to the car. Um, and we didn't want to have anything as uncouth as a, a sort of wing, um, knowing that this is a, a high performance car. There are certain demands aerodynamically on this rear area. So we actually worked hand in hand with the aerodynamicists to sculpt this rear profile area and introduce this void section that helps to accelerate airflow across this surface and in turn provide the downforce that's needed over the rear axles when it's traveling at speed. But in turn, the client then, knowing this sort of aft deck area serves as a potential canvas to also help bring some of the personality and particularly this abstract depiction of roses from the interior out onto the rear area, um, but to execute it with an entirely different technological finish to that that you find on the interior. Very interesting. And what about this particular design there, what's the meaning there? Paddles? Yes, so the client, I mean, as you know, the, the whole design is, is, is informed by the black Baccarat rose, okay. um, which is native to France. It's a point of affection for the commissioning family. And for us as a creative team, it was also a point of a fascination, not just in terms of its hue and texture, which has, of course, informed the overall palette, but particularly the depiction of the roses themselves. Here, the client was quite insistent that they wished to have something that gave the impression of rose petals floating through the interior but not in a literal sense um, and to bring together an achingly modern craft aesthetic and execution together with the age-old tried techniques so this is actually a parquetry application that covers the entirety of the the interior it's made up of 1603 individually cut sanded wow. and placed pieces of black sycamore that again was sourced in France playing on the French uh, heritage of the car itself um, and as you can see here, not only is it beautiful, it helps to sort of emulate and exaggerate the surfacing and the form of the interior space as we find it here. Very interesting. And at the same time, there is a very visually pleasant, I would say, interior design because you have this combination of classy but also digital in many ways. Was that something that the client really wanted? I would say that was a shared ambition between both us and the commissioning clients in the sense that we wanted to create a design that was entirely timeless. Um, so here to carefully balance the demands that we have uh, with it being a modern motor car, technologically, um, the assistances that you need and the functionality that you need. but to major on celebrating materials and celebrating craft. So that's why you see this paired back and, and reduced um, form language to the interior that allows the materials to really be celebrated. You know, the three key elements, the shoreline that encircles the occupants and provides the sculpture behind the seats, the elliptical floating uh, plinth in the center, and of course the clarity and the precision that comes with the, the visual representation of the instrument panel itself. And so somehow a meeting of the client's two great passions in life, uh, the first, of course, Rolls-Royce motor cars, but secondly, their appreciation of fine watchmaking. And here at the client's request, uh, we work together with uh, the Haute Horologie Maison, Audemars Piguet, to produce not only a unique high complication timepiece, but to incorporate it as the timekeeping device for La Rose Noir drop tail itself. Um, the client wished to remove it from their wrist and be able to place it in this holding mechanism that then allows the timepiece to retreat back into the, the fascia of the car and, as I say, become the timekeeping uh, device for the car itself. It's, it's, it's an extraordinarily beautiful piece of, of, uh, of uh, engineering and craft. Gotcha. So how long does it take to do a project like this? Um, so 
we talk openly that this uh, project, as you see it here, La Rose Noire Drop Tail, was over four years of work. Um, but the, the formative ideas and, and the early sketches probably predated even that. Um, you know, I think the, 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 pr the idea of creating a modern roadster body type is, is something that's always had us excited in the design studio, and, and that's why it's such a special moment to be here in Monterey uh, presenting the car to you today. How exciting it is to work on a project like this from an automotive designer perspective? It's, it's, it doesn't get much better, I have to say. You know, it, uh, it's not lost on me that we have at Rolls-Royce this unique confluence between not only the practice of automotive design, but the fact that you're working together with clients. And the clients are, are, are you know, in many ways patronizing um, our projects. They are allowing our ideas to be commissioned off paper and to become you know, real things as, as you see it here. And and this is totally unique within the automotive space um, and something that is an, an absolute privilege to be a part of. So I know that Thorsten mentioned maybe a little bit what it means to pick the client actually for the project. Mm. There are a lot of people that can't afford a car like this. Mm. What are some, maybe some of the main criteria when you go to a client and say we would love to you know, work with you on this project? Um, well, it wouldn't really be uh, like my core. Yours, I mean, yeah, but to, to, like as a company, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I think the main thing is that we, we look for the right understanding and sensitivity for the brand. Um, you know, we enter into something like this. It is, it is a huge undertaking, um, and we demand huge amounts of, of time from our commissioning clients. Um, we ask uh, an unbelievable amount of patience. You know, they commit to an idea uh, and then have to wait sort of four and a half years for it to be realized um, so it's those qualities that we probably look for most um, but we're, we're very very fortunate to have had in my experience just the most wonderful you know co-creations and collaborations that, that have resulted in some extraordinary Rolls-Royce motor cars. That's amazing so we have this ongoing joke right with uh, <laughs> in every interview I have to ask you once again with the camera on. <laughs> How much does something like this cost? Well, I, I, I really hoped you would have learned by now. <laughs> there is no price to put on it. I'm, 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 I'm very sorry, but a humble design, I can't help you with the, with the financials, I'm afraid. I've got to try next time once again. Yeah. Right? There are three more coming, there, there, so yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe you can, you can try. Ford one, then we can put a price on it. Yeah, you can definitely keep trying. But no, I mean, for me, these, what characterizes these cars is so much more than, than, than simply the, the, the price tag that represents them. You know, these, these are significant moments in, in not just the modern era of the mark, but you know the, the mark as a whole. You know this is where we somehow immortalise the, the the pursuits and the passions of our clients as part of you know our ongoing you know portfolio, and, and that is remarkable, really. Amazing, Alex. Thank you so much. Amazing car. I hope to see you soon with a new project, but this is absolutely spectacular. Pleasure, Horatio. Really, absolute really pleasure. Absolute pleasure.